Are you ready for pain? Are you ready for suffering? If the answer is yes, then you're ready. What will make a woman happy is having a family, serving her husband, raising the next generation. And okay, so get off the mic and go do that. How is hubby going to get his braised chicken and apple pie by 7 o'clock when you've been talking on social media all day? You got work to do. I really can't stand these women on social media who want to tell the rest of us to, like, be obedient and submit. Oh, but you're the exception, right? Because you get to have an opinion. You get to have a platform. You think you just get to be the chosen messenger for men's interests? No, there's self-interest there, too. You're not slick. This is my Tradwives video, part two. I got some interesting critique. First really solid critique I got was from La Lucero 8. They critiqued me that I was endorsing a position that is used by white supremacy. That is an absolutely fair critique. And look, it's a TikTok video. Don't have time to give nuanced responses to things, right? So hence this video. Tradwife is like this elevated version of a white supremacist argument that women should stay home. What is it in our culture and in our history that makes that only a certain group of people to have the choice of sovereignly choosing whether or not to stay home? Totally fair critique. Then there are the other critiques. I will add that while I love men and don't consider myself misandrist in any way, all of the kind of garbagey critiques I got were from men, saying that feminism has gone too far, saying that women want to be superior to men. What women want is sovereignty. We want to control our own lives. We want to own ourselves. We want to control our own destiny. We don't want someone, anyone, a partner, a man, a father, a boss, determining that for us. You are incorrect. Right. I've seen videos on my For You page from white women talking about how they want to go back to the 1950s housewife era when women weren't working. I have three problems with this. One, who wasn't working? Black, brown, indigenous women were working. Poor white women were working. So unless you don't consider those women to be women, Show me, where your, show me where your statement is correct. Maybe your ancestors weren't working if they were wealthy enough to not work, but they were still subjected to a violent patriarchy. Which brings me to my second point, violent patriarchy. Women during that time period were emotionally, mentally, physically, and sexually abused. And the women who were lucky enough to not be getting abused were still incredibly restricted. They had no choice, no autonomy, literally no power over their own lives. And the third thing is that what you're seeing in terms of like media that's making you romanticize this is propaganda. The cute little drawings of families walking down by the lake pushing a pram, Propaganda. Half of those drawings were done in like the 70s. The movies, TV, and music from that era, propaganda. They put that media out there in order to make people complacent by romanticizing the traumas that they were going through. I understand that this is coming from a place of being incredibly frustrated with capitalism. Women work something called a second shift. So they're going into work and getting a paid job, and then they're coming home and doing the majority of the unpaid labor, meaning housework and childcare. This imbalance is so fucked up. But wishing to go back into a time period where there was rampant patriarchy, racism, and sexism makes no fucking sense. And making statements like when women didn't work is incredibly harmful. It's perpetuating the false and whitewashed narrative of history. What will make a woman happy is having a family, serving her husband, raising the next generation, and then- Do these trad wives understand that the only way that that model can work is if men have no free will and can never leave them? Like, it's all well and good to find fulfillment in cultivating a long-term romantic relationship. It's all well and good to want to raise children. And it's fine to seek fulfillment in the growing of your family and the maintaining of your family. But the traditional femininity and the trad wife approach puts women in a position where they have absolutely no way to make their own money, access to finances that is reliant upon the person they're married to, and no true independence. So what happens when he leaves you? Because marriage is no guarantee that you're gonna be with that person forever. Divorce is legal and it is common. And what's more, if you are married to the kind of guy who also buys into the strong gender roles ethos of the traditional model, then he buys into the other patriarchal and misogynistic bullshit too that values in a woman youth, skinniness, prettiness, and subservience, which are all things that as a woman you are going to have less and less of as you get older. So maybe we would all be trad wives if men could never leave us, and if our relationships could never end, but they can and they do, and in most cases they will. It's 12.30.
2022, women should have the choice to be homemakers or not without being judged. Don't you all dare go to this woman's page. I think she's sweet and she's educated me on something, although... Okay, so there is a part of society that's now being called trad wives. And you label that for yourself if you're a traditional wife, the homemaker, the submissiveness, all that stuff. She's getting a lot of hate and she said, it's 2022, women should be able to choose how they're going to live. And I agree. And choice, you know what I'm saying, should always be there and be open. I don't care what people do as long as they don't push it on other people. But I have to say I am suspicious of this account. And if she doesn't realize that she's posting fetish videos, I want her to know. You could just sit in a cubicle all day. While you I absolutely despise women on the right because they blame feminism for problems of patriarchy and capitalism. See right here, she's talking about how working outside the home in like a typical office job is incredibly unfulfilling and exploitative. But that's feminism's fault for letting women outside the home, not, you know, capitalism, which allows such horrible working conditions for people. And then goes on to blame feminism for women doing the domestic work as well as work outside the home. When in actual fact, it is men's fault for not picking up domestic labour as much as they should. Like, this is clearly symptomatic of far-right anti-women politics and these trad Femmes, trad wives, a pathetic little wet wipe. We are going to get into the ideology behind the TikTok trad life phenomenon. And specifically, we're going to talk about it through the lens of this piece in Descent by Zoe Hu, which talks about the kind of contradictory strangeness of the trad wife's relationship to heterosexuality and to men. So who writes, what unites trad wives is their rejection of both capitalism and feminism, which are conflated in the gloomy figure of the working woman. Through a slate of hand, the cloth is whipped away and feminism revealed as a defunct and joyless system of hatred. Trad women have no use for it. They rebel against rebellion and are content with, even romantic about, their roles of dependence and servitude. They profess to love men and masculinity, to hate the notion of gender fluidity or egalitarian partnership. And yet, after watching enough trad life content, one starts to wonder if, in addition to love, there also exists among trad wives a real fear of men. After all, the homebound trad wife has managed her life such that she rarely interacts with men as a group. She has no male co-workers. If she sees men socially, they're either the harmless husbands of women she knows or her family members. To be alone with an unfamiliar man would be a singular taboo. In all, the trad wife deals with one male figure, her spouse, and even then only in the short hours before and after he goes to work. If she is an army wife, the absence can lengthen to months. It is an ironic development. In this way, the trad wife has proven herself not too different from the lesbian separatists of the second wave, who she claims to detest. In disavowing feminism, she actualizes one of its most infantile desires, reducing to a blessed minimum contact with men and the sexual threat or promise that they pose. Okay, so then theoretically, if you're like an anti-capitalist feminist, what's the problem with this? Who makes the argument that the problem is that these people, in saying that they're disavowing capitalism, are seeking refuge from capitalism in the nuclear family, which is itself a fundamental structure of like the capitalist economy? And their vision of the nuclear family is like a distinctly joyless one. Regardless of its nostalgic Americana, trad life's vision owes less to Norman Rockwell than Thomas Kincaid. The glitter is cold and the insistence on perfection almost hysterical. Rockwell, even at his most idealized, still populated his work with people and their hijinks. He was interested in the capacity of individuals to surprise each other. Meanwhile, in its videos and photos of well-lit private spaces, trad life makes property rather than humans its central object. As in Kincaid's paintings, the house appears as a refuge from others. In other words, like whatever you think of these people's professed values of being deeply pro-heterosexuality, deeply pro-men, but anti-capitalist, that's not what they're practicing. What they're practicing is very anti-man and anti-heterosexuality, but very capitalist. And I think to myself, 
The premise of this sad little video is a great example of how the patriarchal worldview expects innocence and childlikeness to be the default and most desirable condition of femininity. Traditional family values are inherently infantilizing to adult women. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Still around today. You can literally go ask them. So this video is about like the whole trad wife trend and how you're basically emulating like gender norms from the 1950s and 60s. And you can go back and ask those women what that experience was like, because a lot of them are still alive, right? Well, as somebody who has actually had that conversation with my grandmother, let me recap for you. Being kicked out of school at the age of 15 because she had allowed an adult man to impregnate her. Being forced to marry that man. Being shunned by that man's parents because they were very religious and she had tempted him away from the Lord. Being abandoned by that man and left alone with my infant mother and thus forced to marry the first guy who offered her a chance because she literally needed him to survive. I'll give you a hint that didn't work out very well for her. And then uh, having to take jobs where she was treated like shit and underpaid because as her bosses would tell her, her male colleagues had families to support and they really needed the money more than she did boggles my mind about the whole trad wife phenomenon. Not the desire to take on a more traditional role or to stay home with your kids if that's what you want. It's the submitting to male leadership that blows my mind. Stay home, have a ton of kids, be CEO of household though. Don't submit to the man. Term trad wife, it is a woman who chooses to live a more traditional life with- So choices don't exist in a vacuum. When you make a choice, you're making a choice in a social and a political context, and your choices have consequences for other people. And there are good choices and bad choices. Not every choice a woman makes is going to be necessarily liberating. Particularly when we live in a society that constrains women's choice so much. In fact, most things are determined by our social and political context. Very little of what we do is, in fact, a choice. One of the slogans in second wave feminism was the personal is political. And that's been used to mean many things that it wasn't originally intended. But the original intention behind the personal is political is to critically examine the choices we make and critically examine the constraints we have on those choices. It's not a surprise that women are finding the trad wife lifestyle appealing right now. In a time where women are so hypersexualized, when we have this toxic hookup culture, when most men are consuming very violent pornography, just going, oh, it's a choice, shuts down all critical examination of any of those factors. And maybe you have this lifestyle and you have a nice life. I don't know you. But the fact is, giving your full material security over to a man is a very dangerous choice for many women and children. I just got done doing an interview deep diving the entire trad wife movement. Because although I love the aesthetic and I am a stay-at-home mom, I do not believe a woman's place is in service to her man or her household. So when we were discussing the trad wives and why it's connected to the alt-right, a realization came into my head that I had not yet made the connection between. The reason why trad wives and so-called like traditional women can be so dangerous is because they believe it is not just their place to be in service to their husbands and their homes. It is women's place to be in service to their husband and their homes. The difference between individual choice and natural position is what makes it dangerous because men have been able to hold those misogynistic views forever. And only recently has feminism pushed back against it. But when it is a woman who holds these ideologies to be truth, she has now emboldened an entire score of misogynistic men to go forth and subjugate women on the premise that that is their place.